When you think about the time, that time historically, cross-dressing was illegal. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 LGBTQ plus documentaries you need to watch. By the time you're 28, growing up in a, a small town, you know what that look, what that look is. But what of those like Vicky, who don't want to be treated, who want to be women? Are we to judge? Vogan is not just a dance to me. Vogan is an art. It's something, it's like an outlet to me. For this list, we're looking at the most groundbreaking and essential films in the genre. How many of these have you seen? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Bridegroom. His name was Tom, and he was my life. This film boasts being the most funded documentary in Kickstarter history. It received even more clout when it was introduced at the Tribeca Film Festival by former President Bill Clinton. And our goal was to hit all the wonders of the world, and we managed to make it to four before Tom died. Bridegroom tells the story of Shane Bitney Crone, a man who found himself lacking in support and legal resources after the death of his partner of six years. So a little bit later, he calls me and he says, Mom, they, they won't let me in to see him. And I said, well, how come? And they said, because I'm not family. Crone and Thomas Lee, Tom Bridegroom, had been together for six years, and yet Crone was not even permitted to attend his funeral. It's a heartbreaking look at a relationship and shows the hardship that LGBTQ plus couples have usually faced when it comes to the legality of their partnerships. And even though I couldn't be in the church, like I wanted to be as close as I could to Tom, just being near was somehow comforting. Number nine, Before Stonewall. For most people who were attracted to members of their own sex, denial of these feelings was their only choice. The Stonewall riots are largely considered the major pivotal point in American LGBTQ plus rights. But sometimes, all of the work that took place beforehand gets forgotten. Before Stonewall focuses specifically on this issue, looking at activism from closer to the beginning of the 20th century. Homosexuality has always been a dirty word. I cannot remember in my 70-some years the time when it wasn't a dirty word." With interviews from figures like Allen Ginsberg, Evelyn Hooker, and Anne Bannon, this documentary explores a historical period that isn't traditionally considered to be key in the history of the movement. It was my first opportunity to meet other gay men in a social setting and to exchange with each other the the pain, the agony that we've known. The film took home two Emmy Awards for Best Historical Cultural Program and Best Research. The tide really turned at the time of Stonewall. A large number of gay people who had not known about the movement before heard about it and said, I am going to join this or I'm going to start something of my own. Number eight, Disclosure, Trans Lives on Screen. We've been around since there was uh, footage. You just have to look for us. This 2020 documentary is one of the newest films on our list and focuses specifically on the topic of transgender representation in media. Looking at how Hollywood portrays trans characters, it explores how these portrayals have influenced the broader cultural mindset. Seeing trans people loved, uplifted, and well-regarded in film and television can endear you to step in when you see a trans person being harassed on the street. Sam Fader produced and directed the documentary, which features commentary from prominent figures such as Laverne Cox, Susan Stryker, Alexandra Billings, Jamie Clayton, and Chaz Bono. Disclosure has a 98% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes and is available to stream on Netflix, so there's no excuse not to give it a watch. I wonder if they will reach out to trans people in need and work to defeat policies that scapegoat us. Number seven, Matt Shepard is a friend of mine. I miss my friend and I'm not ready to let him go. I really like that picture. That was the last time I saw him, actually. And that's why I'm making this film. The murder of University of Wyoming student Matthew Shepard made headlines in the late 90s and opened up discussions of homophobic hate crimes in the United States. But although much of the story was sensationalized in the media, a friend of Matthew's, Michelle Josue, wanted to show the world the young man behind the story. As awful as this was, that would this be the one that would make policymakers care? Would this be the one that would reach homophobes around the country and wake them up? Matt Shepard as a friend of mine is an emotional look at Matt Shepard's life before it was taken away from him by this hateful act of violence, as well as how his friends and family have coped since. And Maybe things that are so outrageous as the way Matt died 
is something that you don't come to terms with. Number six, Kiki. The Kiki scene is a space for youth development. Everyone's unique. And the Kiki scene is a place for young people to explore that uniqueness. The LGBTQ plus community has faced so much hardship over the years that documentaries on the topic can tend to be heavy and difficult to watch. 2016's Kiki is one major exception. Focusing on New York's drag and voguing scene and African-American drag ball culture, this film is a sort of unofficial sequel to Paris is Burning. More on that later. Sarah Giordino's film shows the joy and brightness this community can bring to LGBTQ plus youth who may be otherwise struggling. Voguing is not just a dance to me. Voguing is an art. It's something, it's like an outlet to me. Set within the backdrop of the Black Lives Matter movement, this film is both political and genuinely optimistic. But I can't, I just know, I just know like the harsh reality of living as a trans woman of color. Um, so if you decide to live as a trans woman of color, you have courage. Number five, The Queen. Semi finalist number five. If Kiki is a kind of follow-up to Paris is Burning, then The Queen is a precursor. This film is an illuminating look at the drag scene of the 1960s, focusing primarily on New York's Miss All-America Camp Beauty Contest. But here is the only winner in the 1967 Nationals, that queen which will reign over America. While the contestants are preparing to compete, we see the various queens discussing the issues that were important to the community at the time, like gender identity and gender confirmation surgeries. I actually think it's funny because I come from a little small town, about 500 people, and everybody in that town knew I was gay from the time I was five years old on that. Despite the fact that this documentary was created more than half a century ago, it still feels pertinent today. Number four, how to survive a plague. This film by David France takes a deep dive into the beginnings of the AIDS crisis, following some of the activists working to seek out treatments for the epidemic. I started to look for treatments to help save our life. I wish they'd shut their mouths and get their mentality out of their crotches. Using hundreds of hours of archival footage, France pieces together a history of ACT UP, an organization created to push the American government to allocate more resources to treating and curing HIV. It explores their conflicts with the FDA and pharmaceutical industry. We need our government to save our lives. Number three, the celluloid closet. Homosexuality has only rarely been depicted on the screen. When it did appear, it was there as something to laugh at. Despite the fact that this film was released in the mid-90s, it's still considered to be the preeminent work exploring LGBTQ plus representation in Hollywood. Hollywood, that great maker of myths, taught straight people what to think about gay people, and gay people what to think about themselves. Looking at the tropes and stereotypes that define queer characters and how things have changed over the years, The Celluloid Closet tracks the evolution of sexual diversity on screen. The first film that really uh, celebrated homosexuality, as far as I was concerned, was Cabaret. <laughs> It looks at how the Hayes Code altered the freedoms that were afforded to LGBTQ plus characters, as well as how depictions have progressed in recent years. We'd love to see an updated version of this concept exploring the 21st century. The long silence is finally ending. New voices have emerged, open and unapologetic. Number two, the death and life of Marsha P. Johnson. Marsha was an icon of the gay movement. Marsha was known through the world. Marsha and I, we were the liberators. Director David France is back on our list with the 2017 film, The Death and Life of Marsha P. Johnson. Telling the story of this trans gay rights activist's life and the mysterious circumstances surrounding her death, this documentary takes decades old issues and makes them relevant to the current social climate. You know, there's all these pieces here that point to exactly what we were saying back then, mm -hmm. that Marsha did not die by suicide. Johnson's death was ruled a suicide, despite evidence to the contrary. And this is a phenomenon which has long plagued the LGBTQ plus community and is still an ongoing issue. The film also focuses on Johnson's integral role in the Stonewall riots and is available to stream on Netflix. She's not here, but she's here in spirit, Marsha. Yeah. 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 She'll always be with me. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. 
A Secret Love, a lesbian love story that remained a secret for decades. Didn't know they were gay till three, three years ago. I felt like I was sort of living a lie. So I said to Pat, the next time Diana comes down, I'm going to tell her. The Brandon Tina story, the true story behind Boys Don't Cry. Brandon really was a man. Oh, Jesus. He would have women after him all the time. I mean, he knew how to please you. He knew how to do everything right. Queens at Heart, a series of interviews with four trans women. Do you have any brothers or sisters? I have an older brother. Does he know that you're homosexual? No. What do you think he'd do if he found out? Probably kill me. We were here, a look at the AIDS crisis in San Francisco. None of my friends are around from the beginning. So I want to tell their story as much as I want to tell my story. I think that's why. Trixie Mattel, Moving Parts, a portrait of drag queen Trixie Mattel. The queen who has earned her spot in the Drag Race Hall of Fame, the champion of All Stars 3 is... Trixie Mattel. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Paris is burning. They don't have a home to go to, but they'll make They'll go out and they'll steal something and get dressed up and come to a ball for that one night and live the fantasy. This film has already merited several mentions on our list because it is perhaps the most influential and well-known LGBTQ plus documentary of all time. Now you want to talk about reading. Examining what's become known as the golden age of ball culture in New York, Jenny Livingston's film delves into the African-American and Latino drag scene in the city. We have had everything taken away from us and yet we have all learned how to survive. Though its focus may be niche, it takes the subject and places it in the broader cultural spectrum to explore issues relevant both in 1990 and today. It's a classic, and you should definitely add this to your to-watch list if you haven't already seen it. Everybody wants to leave something behind them, some impression, some mark upon the world. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.